All right, then I want to talk briefly about um, the jury view. I did provide the parties with um, a proposed instruction. Before I get to that, though, Mr. Brooks, I have been thinking about your request yesterday. Um, and I know I indicated to you that I would require you to be there. I've rethought that. I've had the overnight to really think about it. And um, if that is your decision to not be present for that, um, what I would say is this. You, I want you to be advised that you have a right to be at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much told me... Uh yesterday about you know everything that was going on i just didn't i didn't agree to or consent to it being well i was still confused about why did there even need to be a jury view that was my whole thing i i didn't i don't see the the relevancy of it and i also didn't agree with agree with or consent to having to be part of something that i don't see as relevant I appreciate you making a record of that, but did you hear what I said, that you have a right to be present for it? I've ruled that where, let me back up. There's been a request from the state to have the jury look at the vehicle that was recovered by the police and of course is alleged to be the vehicle that was driven through the parade. Did you hear me advise you of that? Yes, I heard. All right, so that motion was addressed previously and I granted the request for that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Uh, I'm informed. All right, thank you. So with that, you have a right to be present at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. And um, I would like you to be there. I believe it is a piece of evidence. That's why I've uh, drafted jury instruction 152 the way that I did. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. So my question to you then this morning is, do you want to be present at the jury view of the vehicle? Uh, I, I don't see the reason why I would need to be present. Well, that's my question to you though, is do you want to be present for it? You are the accused in this case. You're the person who the state has alleged committed these acts, it's the jury view will be to view a piece of evidence that frankly can't come into the courtroom due to its size, and the jury's going to be shown that. So do you want to be present at that? For the record, I'm not a person, I'm a human being, and uh, no, I do not consent to or agree to being present at a jury view. All right, then I'm going to honor his request, but what I am going to do, though, is as part of that process in any event, because it's being done in a secure location, is um, I have ordered that a, a, I want to make a record of what's being done, and I want a visual record of what is being done. And so this jury view is going to take place in the Sally Port of the jail and precautions are being taken so that the jurors do not know where it's at. Um, it, they'll just, it'll look like a garage, right? Anything that says jail within the Sally Port is being covered up. That will be verified before anyone is taken in there. They will be transported to there. Um, it's, I'm not sure if they'll walk or drive because it's very close. Um, but then I, the Sheriff's Department, because um, it's, as the court official, I'm in charge of keeping the record, not keeping the record, I'm in charge of making the record, It's the better way to say it. And I wanna make sure that there's a record of what is done for this trial and certainly for any appellate purposes, if need be. <coughs> the Sheriff's Department, excuse me, the Sheriff's Department is obviously charged with the security and safety of a courtroom, including the jurors. And so I have asked the Sheriff's Department to record and so there is a camera with, uh, that will be on a tripod that will record what's there before anyone gets there. I've instructed them to take that camera to walk around the vehicle and while it's recording to put it back on the tripod and th before um, 
the jurors and the court are brought in. Once we are brought in, it will also be recorded and that contemporaneous recording, um, so that will be as uh, I will walk, uh, we will walk around the vehicle uh, one time, that will be recorded, and then both of those recordings are going to be made part of the record. Um, because the second recording is for the record and has the jurors, um, at this point I'm going to seal it uh, so that uh, at least until the conclusion of the case, given the order that I have regarding the uh, what's referenced as an anonymous or numbered jury, so that will be sealed. Um, but what will be released to the uh, public or be made part of the public record, and so therefore any media request, would be that recording that just shows the vehicle without the jurors in it and without the court. So, and then I plan on also bringing that back to the courtroom while the Sheriff's Department's gonna bring it back and then we'll show it to you at that time. I, I have a question though. Uh, Go ahead. If if I have a right to be present, then I have a right to not be present. How can this take place if I don't agree or consent to being present? How can it even still take place without, without uh, it, me? It will take place, sir. I'm just going to honor your request not to be there. I'm asking a question, though. How can it take place without my consent or agreement? If you don't agree, it's going to take place. That's how I'm going to answer that, sir. So you not going there is not going to prevent it from happening. My Lord, is, is, but you can forfeit your right or to I be there I by your conduct. And by I your didn't. conduct, by not answering my question, by saying I don't want to be there and I don't consent to it, um, you will be forfeiting your right to be present and essentially waiving that. Doesn't, that, doesn't I have to sign something for it to be waived? Um, I don't think so in this case. Well, yesterday you said something about uh, uh I know I said that and I've yeah, had some time yeah. to think about that further um, and um, I don't believe I need to take a full waiver with you signing anything or even agreeing to the waiver um, so why did I have to do that for when my uh, oh, I'm not going to answer those questions because that would we... be for me to give you um, an explanation of the law um, no, I'm just going just to be... tell you that I'm not going to require a written waiver mm -hmm. from you in order to honor your request to not be at the, or even if I phrase it, your lack of consent to the jury view. And is that lawful law because... Sir, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the law that applies to that. This is I... my ruling. If you disagree with it and ultimately there is a conviction, you can raise that on appeal. But no, your lack Your of consent is not going to stop the jury view. It's it, going to happen. It's a piece of evidence that I cannot physically fit in this courtroom. It's too big. It, there's no way to get it in. Okay, I'm informed of that. But at the same time, if I haven't signed any waiver, how could it be lawful? I haven't given consent or agreement to a jury view. I haven't waived any right. The, when the whole issue was brought up on the record yesterday, my first thing that I said was, I don't see the relevancy of why there should even be a jury view. And that was the whole issue. And yesterday I was told about the, I don't know how you say it, the colloquy qu or however you say it. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I know what was, I said. And yeah. I'm telling you I had time to reflect. That was my initial reaction to your statement yesterday, but I've thought about it some more and I'm changing my mind. Um, so I, you, I don't believe I need to take a full waiver with a colloquy with you and anything in writing. I'm advising you, you have the absolute right to be there. But I'm also advising you that if you choose not to be there, I will honor that request. Um, and I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to. I'm not going to direct the sheriff's department to, you know, use any type of, of force, if you will, or require you or get you there without your consent. You either cooperate with that process or you don't. The way I interpret the law, though, Your Honor, which the law is designed for to be interpreted by the people. The way I interpret that is, I have the right or 
essentially to be there or not to be there and it still has to be an agreement or consent that's how I interpret the law my ruling on that sir is I disagree with you you do not need to provide consent uh, for the jury view to happen your objection is noted for the record I'll make a specific finding today that it is relevant uh, to these proceedings to this trial there is an allegation that you drove through the um, Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21 of 2021 driving a red Ford escape killing and injuring uh, killing six and injuring dozens more the relevance is that there is in addition to the charges there's an enhancer that has been charged as it relates to the intentional homicide charges and the first degree recklessly endangering safety that you committed those acts while using a dangerous weapon i would direct your attention to the meaning of a dangerous weapon that uh, the legal definition that was provided to the jurors in the preliminary jury instructions and that the jury view um, is uh, related to the evidence that the state is presenting uh, regarding the charges and specifically uh, the instrumentality that they allege is the dangerous weapon. So there's clear relevance of this vehicle as and has evidentiary value. Uh, again, your objection is noted for the record, um, but I will uh, and am permitting the jury view of the vehicle. With that, I'm going to give the, I'm going to move on to the jury instruction. Um, I don't agree or consent to that, Your Honor. I, I understand. If, Your if objection not, is well noted for the record. I, I need to keep going, though. On the pattern and jury instruction. I'm informed that you pattern. need to keep going. I'm not trying to stop you from continuing to go. I'm, I'm merely stating for the record that there are things I do not understand how they'll be, how they're being permitted versus the Constitution. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're aware under Article 6, Chapter 2 about the Supremacy Clause that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. So how can we disregard? Mr. Brooks, I'm not disregarding the Constitution. I've well, made I have, my, here's the thing. I've made my ruling, okay? Once I've made a ruling, I do expect that even if you disagree with it, you're going to, you will not continue to argue it. Not that arguing. we will continue on I'm with the next to topic. I understand, Your Honor. It's not an argument. Mr. Brooks, I, I'm not going to explain further other than what I have done, my ruling. My ruling stands. Now, I'm going to move on to the jury instruction. I gave the parties two documents. May I respectfully reject that ruling and take exception um, to that ruling? Your objection is noted. I'm for moving the record, on may to I request jury, a legal and factual basis for Mr. your Brooks, ruling, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, please don't interrupt me, okay? I gave I give you an opportunity to raise your objections and to make your legal arguments, I'm the and then I make a ruling, now. and then you start in on something else. You need to give me your argument all at once. For you to interrupt me afterward is disruptive to me. It's not disruptive, and it's it's interrupting and it's disruptive. It is definitely not disruptive. Well, if that's my view of things, sir, and. What I'm putting on the record is that it does disrupt what I'm doing and the flow of what I'm doing and needing to move on, having to interrupt what I'm doing so that I can address that once again. Please, please, I know you may not always agree with my rulings, but I'd ask that you show the courtesy and decorum that is expected of everyone. And once I make a ruling, we're going to move on. You don't need to keep objecting because your objection's already been noted for the record. I'm going to continue. We're going to look at jury instruction 152. Well, I, still, I gave the parties two documents yesterday. One was I the pattern instruction, um, which I've modified. Just, just and then the one is the draft side. of, like, and I'm, Mr. Brooks, please stop. You're, you're continuing to talk over me. Because you didn't, you're interrupting. You, didn't, you said I have the right to object, and you didn't let me even get to the objection. I, I did, sir. No, okay? you didn't. And I was still, I was my, right Your in the objection of it. comes before the ruling, not after once i make a ruling we're moving on you made a ruling before we even finished the conversation your honor with all due respect <laughs> Brooks, before before we stop. even finish that's not true okay? you said i'm true. gonna make a ruling as soon as soon as you even started in about 
Uh, Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to spend be... hours on end making a ruling about a jury view on something I've already decided. All right? So, please, I'm asking well, you to stop. Stop no, interrupting me. You can't, and please you can't listen. just disregard the United States Constitution. Which I, has I absolutely clause. am not disregarding the you United are, States you, Constitution or the Constitution of, of the state Your of Wisconsin. Honor, are you not a public servant? Okay, Mr. Brooks, you're good. you're starting to cross the line. You've already crossed it, but I want to keep going. I, I want you in this courtroom. Line. But if you keep interrupting me and putting you on notice that um, it's, you are you run the risk of being uh, forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom and continuing in the next courtroom so that I can effectively and without interruption continue with the proceedings this so again, morning. So again, you're holding me in contempt. All right. Jury instruction 152, has the state had an opportunity to review it? Is that a judicial determination that I'm being held in contempt? And I agree generally with the court's um, proposed instruction. I did submit kind of a counter proposed instruction following uh, much of the language that you had in your uh, version, Your Honor. I, I just think it's maybe better to refer to this area as a garage instead of a sally port. I don't know that anybody knows what a sally port is unless they work in this industry. And um, instead of referring it as being in the Waukesha County Jail, I just suggested uh, a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. I think that is factually accurate and would dispel any concerns about anybody being in custody or reference to a jail setting. I did email my proposed instruction to your clerk and I e-filed it, but I admittedly just did that uh, a few minutes ago. So that's why I emailed it to the clerk because it's probably not in your queue yet. All right, why don't we print that off so that Mr. Brooks can review that as well. Since to being called that name, and what do I need to be reviewing? The state has submitted an alternate proposal for instruction 152. And that's referring to this quote unquote jury view? Yes. Thank you. I right, set for value and return for value this document. And I would like the rec record to reflect. I still haven't um, received my original copies of my filings here this morning. With the timestamp. Let me know when you've had an opportunity to review it, if you so choose. I just stated for the record, I set for value and return for value the document. Do you have any position on the state's proposal? I'm, I'm still trying to understand the whole process. Mr. Brooks, my question to you is, do you have any position on the state's proposed jury instruction? Otherwise, I'm uh, going to rule on their request. You're going to rule on the request anyway. I got a lot of questions that don't get answered. I have to rule on the request, sir. It's been a proposal filed with the court. You haven't ruled on subject matter jurisdiction yet. Yes, I have. No, you In haven't. any event, do you have a position on the jury view, sir? Yeah, what about subject matter jurisdiction? One last time, Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on can the I, state's Can I go proposed... over the document, please? Can I do that, Your Honor? Respectfully, for the record, may I do that? You seem like the same the same thing that was there yesterday. It's not. There are some changes. What what changes? It's, it's the same. The, it's the same document that was accepted for value, returned for value yesterday. The same document. It's not the same. The changes were put on the record verbally by the state. Um, it's taking out reference to Sally Port of the Waukesha County Jail, um, referring to it simply as a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse. Those would be in the first two paragraphs. I believe the rest is the same. 
So it was a couple words changed. That's my understanding. So it's the same document. Let me know when you're finished reviewing it and I don't, have a I don't have to review the same document that was reviewed yesterday, except the value and return for value yesterday. All right, then let me ask you this, sir. Do you have a position on the proposed instruction from the state? It's essentially the same document. We needed to, what, what was the significance of the change? What, what's the significance, garage, Sally Port? What, what, is, what is the relevancy of what it's called? State want to put on the record again the basis for the changes you made. Turner, to my way of thinking, it is beneficial to the defendant. It removes any reference to a Sally Port, which some may recognize as being part of the Waukesha County Jail. It removes reference to the jail itself. And then in the second sentence, the pattern instruction was worded and, and the court followed it. You will be taken to the Sally Port in the custody of the jury bailiffs. I just thought it was better to change that. You will be taken to the garage by the jury bailiffs. Again, removing the use of the word custody is it's, it's factually true, but it's really irrelevant. Um, and I, just to be cautious, Your Honor. Thank you. With that, sir, do you have any? I don't, I don't, I don't position? fundamentally understand that. Um, I, I think everyone's well aware that I'm in custody. So why does, how does the wording change with what's already known? Um, everybody knows that I'm housed in the Waukesha County Jail. How does the wording change what's already known? It's reported, it's reported on every single day as it has been since the beginning of trial and even before that. So I don't think anyone's not privy to the knowledge of where I'm housed and that I'm in custody. Um, how, how, does that, how does changing the wording change what's, what's already known? Thank you. From my perspective, um, of course, when I drafted this yesterday, um, factually, uh, what I put in there uh, would be accurate because that's where the jury view is going to take place. I think changing the verbiage so that it says a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse um, takes away any possibility that other law enforcement is condoning what is happening. Um, or somehow related to the case. Um, it is true the location was selected uh, due to your custodial status and being able to secure the area for the court, for you, for the jurors, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also a controlled environment, I think, a good thing for purposes of the jury view. Um, and so I am going to adopt the draft that was submitted by the state. It, can, it still is factually accurate. Um, the whole, and from my perspective, again, the importance of this instruction is to tell them what is and what is not evidence um, and to instruct them and to not talk during this time. They can't discuss what they see during this time. This instruction, uh, will be read while we are still in the courtroom prior to uh, the parties uh, in the court going to the Sally Port for that viewing. And I've already discussed how it will be contemporaneously recorded so that it's part of the record as well. So if I was there, where will I be at? My understanding, if uh, you choose to be there as you will be escorted uh, like you are in court here t now the bailiffs would be with you you'd be in your suit um, no, where where will in, I be it, you would I don't know exactly that's up to the sheriff's department as to where all the parties are going to stand um, obviously you would you know we're not going to commingle you with the state or the state with jurors or you with the jurors or the court or anything like that. We're kind of, my understanding is um, we'll have sort of assigned places and that it's only myself who will walk around. And I may not even do that. I have to think about that, but it, the jurors are the ones who are going to walk around uh, the vehicle one time. 
so I don't get to walk around the vehicle? I can have you do that before, before the jurors come in. I certainly can have you do that, if you would like. I can give the parties that opportunity. And may I add something else, Your Honor? Um, I, I agree with everything the court said. I also think Mr. Brooks should understand that it will be a fair process. He's not going to be led into the room in shackles in front of the jury. What it's my understanding from Captain Dussault, but the attorneys for the state, the prosecution team will be in the room. Mr. Brooks will be in the room. We will be in our assigned location. It will be fair. It will match. There will be basically no distinction between how Mr. Brooks appears to the jury versus how we appear to the jury. We will be in there first. If the court's willing to allow him to walk around the car one time to look at it, we have no objection to that. And then the jurors will come in. No one will speak. They will do one lap around the car. They will leave the room. And then the parties will leave the room. That's my understanding, Your Honor. And I will add to that, because it's been a while since I had some preliminary discussions with the Sheriff's Department on this, that if however many bailiffs, sh sheriff's deputies are with you, I want the same number with the state. Right? And that's what we mean by it will look no different. So each party will be accompanied by deputies. Um, I have a question to that. Okay. Um, how come none of that knowledge of how it would be conducted was discussed with me? I didn't, I didn't know anything about how the bailiffs would actually do things, how certain things would, would go. To, I, I, this is my first time hearing this. Well, we so have preliminary, I don't understand it. We had preliminary discussions at the time of the request back in August when you still were represented by counsel. Um, and then I had some prelim additional preliminary discussions, if you will, internally with court staff, which included Captain Dussault and uh, someone from the jail uh, to talk about it and the logistics of it. And then, of course, we're having the discussion now, which is Again, why there's no jury here now, I wanted to wait until the appropriate time and then make a record of everything. But don't you At no time did I have conversations independently with the state. Don't they had filed a letter at one point because they themselves had, again, my understanding, and Attorney Opera can correct me if I'm wrong, had some discussions with, to see if it was feasi feasible, uh, they had some discussions with Captain Dussault. And Captain Dussault is uh, with the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. Of course, uh, the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department uh, and the sheriff is statutorily responsible for the security of the campus, security of the courtroom. Um, and so that would be the proper person for any party to have discussions about a piece of evidence uh, such as this. Um, but I did not have any discussions with the state myself. That only happened in the setting of a courtroom or when uh, a letter was received and I reviewed it. I haven't reviewed that letter or seen it. Don't you think that? It was specifically addressed at the jury status hearing, at which time he was represented by Attorney Perry and Attor Attorney Keys. It is on file, and it was addressed by this court. Many of these details, Your Honor. All right. Many of the same so, details that's being discussed right now at this moment. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have uh, a request as it relates to any of that? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the whole, how, how this is all working. And then it was a reference to um, how the shackles would look or how being shackled or not being shackled. I'm guessing that I can't just walk around freely with bailiffs. I'm sure there would be some type of shackles. Um, I will tell them you are not to be shackled visibly for the jury to see. And what do you mean by visibly, and Your Honor? So, obviously when you sit in court, you're shackled to a table, they can't see that. Um, I'm not gonna have you in belly chains or in uh, leg shackles. You're just going to be escorted. And it will be up to them how they determine um, well, he may be in leg shackles, Your Honor, if there's a table or some way that they can keep that out of the view of the jury, just like he is in court. He's shackled in court. He has been for three weeks. Actually, these are the 
The security has to be left at the discretion of the sheriff's department. You Actually, know, these are leg position. leg shock devices, not shackles. Sir, the security is up to the sheriff's department. I should be careful not to overstep my bounds on that. And you know, whatever is done, it should not be viewable or visible to the jury. Um, and why, why is that, Your Honor? I don't understand that part. Why is the jury not privileged to see? That is to your benefit. Shock. I'm not going to explain that any further. I, um, I just I don't understand. I'm just seeking to understand. I don't know. All right, I need to move on. So I, if unless there's a specific request other than a statement that yep. you're making about your lack of understanding, I need to move on with the other topics. There is I a need specific to request. Why do I have to have ankle shocks on my ankles to appear at this jury view thing? I guess I'm not aware of what you're talking about. So did, were you advised by the sheriff's department that that would be the case? Well, she, the, the DA just said that I would have the ankle shocks on. No, shackles, she said. No, the, these are not shackles. They're shock, a shock device. Judge, I think perhaps we can move on. I think maybe because this is going to have to occur on a break. The bailiffs can take him down there if Captain Dusselt is willing. Show him what it's going to be like. Show him how he's going to get there. And he can decide at that point if he wants to be there or not when the jury comes in the room. We're spending a lot of time talking about security and things that are frankly beyond your knowledge and my knowledge. I object to that. I'm simply trying to understand why do I need ankle shocks. I'm going to leave the security. Um, I'm not going to make any specific orders. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I will leave the security of the jury view to the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. That is their responsibility. Um, and I trust that they will do what needs to be done to maintain the security, no different than what they do here. Um, and in their discretion, will determine how best that takes place. And if I need to address anything after that or at that point in time, then it should be brought to my attention. But we are going to move on this morning. So I should discuss that with the sheriff? Yes. So I know, Mr. Brooks, you filed uh, with the court two documents. I'm going to take them under advisement. No, it's I'm not one going document. To... It's one. It was two papers, but it's, it's one document. Oh, all right. Thank you for that clarification. It's one filing, two papers, just front side, uh, entitled Alleged Defendant Jurisdictional Challenge and Mandatory Judicial Notice by Affidavit. It references the case caption, the case number. Um, I will simply take it under advisement and, if, and I'll review it later and if I believe it needs to further be addressed I will do that but it's my understanding uh, sir that you um, are requesting the original back is that true yes uh, uh, so actually, normally just so you know when documents are filed with the court we maintain the original until it's scanned in and it's audited and then um, because it under the statute once it's e-filed or into the electronic filing system in the electronic case, um, uh, off, I believe we just destroy the documents at that point. So I don't have an issue giving you back the original, but it needs to run the normal course. My clerk needs to scan it in. Um, I, again, I advised you of this previously, but in the courtroom, we don't have the time stamp. We just have the date stamp. I will state for the record that you provided this. It was right away at the beginning of the morning, so at 8.30 a.m. is when it was filed with the court. So that will be on the record. Um, and then at some point today, when we're on a break, my clerk can scan it in and then provide the original back to you, and then I'll have the electronic copy to review um, and address as I deem appropriate. Here you go, Madam Clerk. Uh, I want to say to that, too, in reference to that, I actually said on record numerous times that I wanted the original copies of all my filings. I've actually said that three times on the record. This would be the fourth time. Yes, Every filing courtesy, that I'm I've, going to give it back to you, sir, but I'm not required to by law. Well, I'm just I'm just saying on record that I I've, I've asked for that numerous times. Your statements noted for the record. All right. So would I be I've able covered... to get all the original copies of all my filings? 
I'm not going to address that any further, sir, because I am not the official keeper of the record. As to what was filed this morning, as a courtesy, we will provide you back with the original once it's scanned and it's in my electronic file. I was told that you make the decision if I can get the original copy. And I just made a determination you could have the original back of this. Can one. I have the originals for all my filings? I'm not going to address that right now, sir. I don't have time, frankly, to look through everything that you filed to determine whether we've given you originals or not. In the future, I have. I have the copy. I don't have the originals. All right, I'm going to move on. I have sir. them here. This is taking up valuable time with the jury. We need to keep going. Um, is that a judicial determination, Your Honor, that I can't get an answer to I, something? I don't believe there's any other preliminary issues we need to address unless uh, the parties have anything from the state.